Thank you. Um, throughout history, man has gone through periods of misery and then joy and then misery and then joy. And I was wondering whether it was part of nature's plan that man should be miserable at times. No, it's not the part of nature. It is the part of our unnatural behavior. Nature has not designed this beautiful, perfect human nervous system to remain in agony. Mm. But if we eat something very hard or if we eat sand, <laughs> and then the stomach will do quite a lot of revolting and then the whole thing will <laughs> occur. So, there are certain things which are meant to be eaten, other things are not for us to eat. They may be for horses to eat, for, for other animals to eat, but not for man. Hmm? So, each nervous system has its own function to perform. Human nervous system has the function to perform and in performing, he has to enjoy the waves of happiness, great happiness, great joy, great love. All this is for man. But when we put some hard things, undigestible things, some poisons in our body, we strain our system of perception by extraordinary loaded experiences, then the system begins to break and that is what we say, stressed. And these stresses cause abnormal behavior. And it is abnormality that comes to us as suffering. And abnormality is not designed or intended by nature. Not knowing how to behave with this most precious and delicate machine, we start to misbehave with it. And in our misbehavior, responsibility comes to us and then we suffer. Suffering is not in the design of the almighty, infinitely intelligent, merciful creator. Suffering is not in his design, particularly for man it is certainly not in the design of God. Because someone very wisely said, man is made in the image of God. When we create our own image, we don't want even our image to suffer. We would not. Hmm? We would not want our image to suffer. So when God created man in his image, he never designed man to suffer. Suffering is foreign to man's nature. Suffering is foreign to nature, that's all. How did man ever break away then from, from periods of peace and, and being like... Hmm? How did man ever break away from periods of peace and, and living pure beings, such as Krishna's period? This is because he got freedom. Infinite freedom to man. He can do anything. Fine, do anything. But mind, you have to bear the consequences of what you do. So freedom of action is to man. But then he must bear the consequences of how he acts. It is the ignorance about life that makes man do which is not good to him, the ignorance about life. And throughout the ages, the understanding about life has been very perverted, very wrong. 
All spiritual quest has been there throughout the ages, but through a wrong understanding. And that is why generation after generation, man has been found suffering. It's due to lack of proper knowledge, lack of proper knowledge. Now, in this generation, we are reviving the real knowledge of life, and then we will establish a situation in society so that no man has ever to suffer. Hmm? How, could, how could man, being carried on by the momentum of the Absolute during certain periods, ever become ignorant of, of the teaching and how can man's perception start suffering the way that it has? If man's in tune with the Absolute, how can he ever fall back to the relative again with, without inf infusing the Absolute into that? Because bliss is man's nature. Great happiness is man's nature. So, wherever he goes, he enjoys. Doesn't matter where he goes, he just enjoys. Wherever he goes, he enjoys, because happiness is his own nature. So wherever he goes, whatever he does, he enjoys. Now, in whatever he started to do, by nature he enjoys. Enjoying, there would be some man who would continue to enjoy that level of joyfulness. There would be some man who would search for more different levels of joy. But there would be many who would enjoy doing what they enjoy. It's like that example, the father, out of kindness, gave a twenty-roomed house full of garden and all that to his son. And the son was stuck up in the library room. He had a reason. He found himself surrounded by all the wise men of all times. Now he enjoys that library room. There is some joy in that room. That joy may fascinate him. He may not step out of that room, and 19 other rooms may remain locked for him. Because he has the joy of the library room, and he enjoys that. He has all the keys, the bunch of keys of all the 19 doors, but the joy of this 20th room is enough for him. Just that. There are seven states of consciousness for every man designed by God, by nature. Man found, waking, dreaming, sleeping, this is enough. Fine, enjoy that enough. Just that. He never stepped on to the fourth. And then, all the scriptures, the written documents about, about the whole field of life, they declared it's very difficult to get on the fourth state of consciousness. Waking, dreaming, sleeping, waking, dreaming, sleeping. Man started to enjoy waking state of consciousness in as many ways as possible. Flying to the moon and getting to the uh, foundation of the ocean and all that, all that. In and out, everywhere, in the air, in the water, on earth, everywhere. Remain in the waking state of consciousness. Spread a network of joyfulness in the waking state. He found this was enough. So it's man's choice. And this choice came about due to lack of knowledge of better fields of choice. Lack of knowledge, that's all, lack of knowledge.